magnesium sulfate for the prevention and the treatment of eclampsia. Magnesium sulfate is a white crystalline solid that is soluble in water, not in ethanol. It is commonly found in the form of magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, which is known as ipsum salt. When it is dissolved in water, magnesium sulfate ionize or separate into magnesium ion and uh, sulfate ion. It is administered by oral, respiratory or intravenous or intramuscular route. Magnesium sulfate is commonly used in the industrial processing and in the agriculture, but in medicine it has many purposes. It is used for the treatment of acute severe arrhythmia. It is used for the treatment of asthma as a bronchodilator, used for the treatment of constipation as a laxatives, and they used to correct hypomagnesemia of different causes, and also used for the treatment of uh, heavy metals poisoning like, like lead and uh, barium poisoning. In obstetrics, it has been used for a long period of time for the treatment and the prevention of eclampsia. It is used as a neuroprotective for preterm neonates for the prevention of cerebral palsy, especially before delivery, if this delivery is anticipated before 32 weeks of gestation, and it is also used as a tocolysis. But our today's focus is to see magnesium sulfate as a seizure prophylaxis or as an anticoagulant. So, magnesium sulfate is a life-saving drug that has been used throughout 20th century for the prevention and the treatment of eclampsia. The efficacy and the safety of magnesium sulfate for the treatment of preeclampsia and eclampsia has been documented for the past 16 years. And uh, several literatures show that magnesium sulfate is an ideal anticonvulsant for preeclampsia and eclampsia treatment. It is considered as a first line seizure prophylaxis for a woman having preeclampsia. It is highly effective for the prevention of convulsion in women with preeclampsia and also effective to control convulsions in women having uh, <coughs> eclampsia as well as to prevent the recurrent convulsions in women having established eclampsia. So, we do have different regimens for magnesium sulfate administrations, we, but commonly used to have the continuous intravenous infusion and intermittent intramuscular injections are the two commonly practiced one. These two regimens are equally effective. So the dosage for preeclampsia is the same as that of the eclampsia. So magnesium sulfate is not used for the treatment of hypertension. So let us see the continuous intravenous infusion. So the loading dose of 4 to 6 gram of magnesium sulfate diluted in 100 ml of normal saline or Ringer lactate administered over 50 to 20 minutes, which is followed by the maintenance dose of 2 gram per hour with continuous IV infusion so we need to have an infuser here but some some recommend the maintenance dose of one gram per hour but studies found that 60 percent of obese women taking the maintenance dose of two gram per hour will have suboptimal uh, suboptimal plasma level of magnesium at four hours so that for a woman having bmi greater than 30 it is recommended to have three gram per hour maintenance dose to have adequate plasma level. So we need to assess the deep tender reflex, the respiratory rate as well. Some institutions recommend serum magnesium measurement every four to six hours to adjust the infusion rate to have the, to maintain the plasma level of four to, four to seven milli equivalent per liter or 4.8 to 8.4 milligram per dl. But this is not uh, recommended by most institutions. So the serum magnesium level determination is recommended when there is uh, serum creatinine level greater than one milligram per dl or when we suspect toxicity it is routine to determine the serum magnesium level. So the maintenance dose should be continued for 24 hours after delivery or 24 hours after the last convulsion if it occurs after delivery. Intermittent intramuscular injections are it has the loading dose of like 14 gram of magnesium, 4 gram of 20% solution will be given IV over 5 minutes 
which is immediately followed by 10 gram of 50 percent magnesium sulfate solutions which is divided into two five gram uh, in each buttock along with one ml of two percent lidocaine deep intramuscular injections in the upper quadrant the upper outer quadrant of the each buttock should be administered the lidocaine is given to decrease the burning sensation if the convulsion recurs after 15 minutes, 2 grams of 20% solution IV over 3 to 5 minutes should be administered. If the woman is large, we can administer up to 4 grams slowly. Then the maintenance dose after 4 hours, 5 grams of 20% solution with lidocaine should be administered every 4 hours in alternate buttock. The maintenance dose should be continued for 24 hours after delivery or 24 hours after convulsion if the woman convulses in the postpartum period. Before repeating the dose of magnesium, we need to ensure that the respiratory rate is at least 16 uh, breeze per minute or the patellar reflex are present, the urine output for the past four hours at least 100 ma. And sometimes it is recommended to hold or delay magnesium if there is the respiratory rate is decreased when there is absent patellar reflex or urine output is decreased. So after four gram of IV loading dose of magnesium is administered, the, the maternal systemic vascular resistance and the mean arterial blood pressure is decreased. This occurred at the same time the cardiac output also increased by 13%. This concomitantly occurred with the transient nausea and the flushing, but the cardiovascular effect occurs only for 15 minutes despite continuous infusion of magnesium sulfate. The other side effect with administration, it can cause weakness, sweating, uh, flushing, nausea commonly occurred after administration of magnesium. So the maternal safety and efficacy, so magnesium sulfate is an effective for the treatment and the prevention of eclampsia, as it has been said. Typically, the mother stop convulsing after the initial 4 gram loading dose, and uh, by 1 to 2 hours, the woman starts to gain consciousness to become oriented to time and place. About 10 to 50 percent of eclamptic women will have a recurrent convulsions after receiving the loading dose. For this woman, as it has been discussed, we will give 2 gram of I mean, two gram of 20% solution IV slowly over three to five minutes. Around 2% of eclamptic women who was given the above loading dose and the additional, the convulsion may continue requiring additional alternative supplementary anticonvulsants to control the convulsion. For this case, we can give the IV barbiturate like lorazepa, midazolam, a small single dose can be administered slowly. Prolonged administration of these barbiturates will result in increased mortality because of uh, aspiration pneumonia as well. Compared with the other anticonvulsant like diazepam, phenytoin and light cocktails, magnesium sulfate is said to be effective in the prevention of a new onset of convulsions in a woman with preeclampsia. It is also effective for the prevention of recurrent convulsions in a woman with eclampsia and also the overall maternal mortality rate is said to be lower with administration of magnesium compared with the other anticonvulsants. That's why it is said to be the first line anticonvulsant for the treatment uh, and uh, <coughs> prevention for the treatment and the prevention of eclampsia. Uh, the study assessing the safety of this magnesium sulfate involving 9,500 women taking magnesium sulfate found that the rate of absent patellar tender reflex was found to be 1.6 percent, the respiratory depression 1.3 percent, and of these women the only 0.2 percent require calcium gluconate and only one maternal this was reported due to the magnesium toxicity. So in general it is said to be safe for the mother. So the pharmacology and the toxicology of magnesium sulfate, <coughs> the parenterally administered magnesium sulfate is cleared almost totally by the renal excretion. Magnesium intoxication is unusual when the glomerular filtration rate is normal or slightly reduced. Sometimes the urine output may is corresponds to the normal GFR, the normal urine output, but 
the magnesium excretion is not totally dependent on the urine excretion per time. So having adequate urine output is not a guarantee not to have magnesium intoxication. So it is recommended to measure the serum creatinine level, which is appropriately determined the glomerular filtration rate. So the initial loading dose of magnesium sulfate can safely be administered regardless of the renal function test. We don't need the renal function test to administer the loading dose. But for the maintenance dose, we need to we need to have the renal function test. So the creatinine should be determined. Then the maintenance should be adjusted based on that. When the creatinine, the serum creatinine level is greater than one, the serum magnesium sulfate should be measured uh, in order to adjust the maintenance dose. But if we do, if we were in the area where we don't have infuser, so we can check the creatinine and if the creatinine is elevated but less than 2.5 milligram, milligram per ten, we can continue the maintenance dose by half. And if the creatinine is elevated and greater than 2.5 milligram per ten, so the loading dose only is enough. So we can use this protocol as well. So all women taking magnesium sulfate, the respiratory rate dependent reflex and the urine output should be routinely followed, okay? Routine serum magnesium level determination is not recommended by most institutions. So it is only indicated if the serum creatinine is greater than one milligram per day. So in that case, it is very important to adjust the infusion rate or to adjust the maintenance dose. Otherwise, it doesn't affect the loading dose. So the eclamptic convulsion can effectively be avoided and prevented by the plasma magnesium level of when the plasma magnesium level is maintained 4 to 7 milli equivalent per liter or 4.8 to 8.4 milligram per deal. So let us see the effect of magnesium at different serum level. So it is used as a seizure prophylaxis as has been discussed 4 to 7 milli equivalent per liter. Inhibit the uterine contractility when the plasma magnesium level reach 8 to 10 milligram of milligram per I mean milli equivalent per liter so when we administer magnesium as a seizure prophylaxis it doesn't affect the liver contraction because the it needs high level if the glomerular filtration rate is low if there is no anticipated toxicity the normally administered seizure prophylaxis it doesn't cause liver abnormality it doesn't increase the risk of cesarean section and also postpartum it doesn't increase the risk of postpartum hemorrhage because of the uterine atony. So loss of deep tender reflex occurred when the serum magnesium level is above 10 milli equivalent per liter so it is because of the cruriform effect of ma magnesium sulfate so it is the earliest sign of magnesium toxicity. Respiratory depression when it is 12 to 15 milli equivalent per liter so this is because of the neuro, neuromuscular blockage that results in the paralysis of the respiratory muscles causing the respiratory depression. So it acts as a general anesthesia. It has also cardiac arrest at the 25 milli equivalent per liter. So how do you manage when there is magnesium sulfate toxicity? The first thing we do is discontinuation of further magnesium sulfate administration. The second is calcium gluconate or calcium chloride one gram 10 ml of 10 percent solution should be administered slowly so we need to have uh, this one of these drugs should be available when we inf when we give the infusion of uh, magnesium sulfate the respiratory support with administration of oxygen should be given so if there is severe respiratory depressions or if there is an arrest prompt tracheal Intubation and the mechanical ventilations are life-saving and the serum magnesium sulfate determination is also very important. So let us see the mechanism of action. Magnesium sulfate has known to have anticonvulsant and neuroprotective effect in several animal models. The mechanism for anticonvulsant effect of magnesium sulfate has not been clearly defined, but there are several hypotheses of this. One is the blockage of the action of the N-methyl-D-aspartate receptor, that is the receptor that rise 
the seizure threshold. The other is membrane stabilization in the central nervous system. Secondary to its actions as a non-specific calcium channel blocker and uh, membrane stabilization due to the decreased acetylcholine in the motor nerve terminal. The other is promote vasodilatation of constricted cerebral vessels by opposing calcium dependent arterial vasospasm, reduced the presynaptic release of neurotransmitters like glutamate. It can also cause potentiation of adenosine actions as is to work as a seizure prophylaxis. So what is the effect on the fetus and the neonate? The par parenterally administered magnesium sulfate readily cross the placenta and cause an effect on the fetal heart rate pattern. It lowered the baseline fetal heart rate, but it is not uh, below the normal range. Decreased bit to bit variability, fewer prolonged decelerations are some of the effect on the fetal heart rate pattern. But this effects they don't cause the adverse fetal outcomes most of the time it is tolerated one studies found that there was no association between the need for neonatal resuscitations and the cord blood magnesium level so that it is not related to the toxicity but there are few uh, there are studies showing that there are few neonatal adverse events associated with the exposure to magnesium sulfate some of these are Neonatal hypotonia reported in 6% of the cases. Neonatal osteopenia when the preterm neonate exposed for several days for magnesium, especially when it is used as a tocolysis, it has a neonatal osteopenia was reported. The low first and fifth minute APGAR score was also the other effect in the need for intubation and the need to admission of nursery care are some of the neonatal effects associated with administration of magnesium. So there are absolute and relative contraindications for administration of magnesium sulfate. This include the myasthenia gravis, severe renal failure, cardiac ischemia, heart block, pulmonary edema. So in this case, the alternative, the diazepam can be taken as an alternative. So the diazepam, we need to be cautious while administering diazepam. The rapid administration of diazepam may result in apnea or cardiac arrest to the, to the mother. And also it is effect on the fetus having increased risk of uh, <clears throat> uh, perinatal asphyxia as well as the neonatal depression is increased. So the, if it is recommended to use, so diazepam loading dose 10 milligram over two minutes can be given. The maintenance within like four, I mean 40 milligram within 500 ml of normal saline or ringer lactate, then the drop should be adjusted to <clears throat> to make the woman uh, sedated but arousable. So if the antidote for diazepam is said to be flumazenil, it can be used as IV. Thank you for watching. If you are new for this channel, don't forget to subscribe to have more videos.